Hi, I'm Wally. I'm Dave. Back to another episode in our series of PVC. Today we're going to go over robot welding. Correct. The robot we're using is a BAK from HAPCO. There's all kinds of robots out there, but it doesn't matter what kind you have. What you have to do, there's, there's a, what we call a weld window. You have to find the bottom of the weld window and you have to find the top of the weld window. And ideally you want to set up in the middle of this. Correct. And how many times do guys ask you, what, what speed and what temperature do I need? Do I need to set my robot? What? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the question of the day. Yeah. What do I need to do? Yeah. Well, you need to do a, a setup. Yeah, because well, you can't tell anybody the no, specific. No. Because every job is going to be different. The mm -hmm. weather's going to change. Again, it's all set up to right. temperature. So what we're going to do here, we've got a robot set up. We're going to start at 700 degrees, and we're going to go about 10 feet a minute. Now, some of you guys may think that's slow. That's that's fine. Whatever temperature and speed you want to do, you still have to do the te you have to do the test weld. Right. What the test weld is. You just want to make sure you have a film turning bond. Right. Once you get that, then the setup's easy. Yeah. So, so you can actually pick whatever. Yeah. Whatever speed and right. temperature you want. But a lot of guys want to set this up with max temperature. Well, you kind of limit yourself then because you got all you got left to play with is speed. Right. So what I've always liked to do, whether I'm doing PVC or TPO, I'm going to find that that speed where remember we're walking on a roof, and most guys are running these are. More times than not, I'm walking backwards. So now you're right. walking backwards on a roof, which is inherently dangerous. And the faster you go, the more dangerous you're dragging it is. that cord with you. And you mm -hmm. got other guys on the roof with corded equipment. You got people, hey man, what time's lunch? You know, <laughs> and you got to try and keep this thing straight. So, like regardless of how fast you want to go, that's entirely up to you. But you got to be, you got to be safe while you're running. So Dave, what we're going to do today? We're going to start at 700 degrees. And we're going to do 10 feet a minute. It's not fast, but it's not no. slow. You know, no. how long is it going to take me to do a 100 foot scene? 10 minutes, right? All right, so we're going to do 700 degrees, 10 feet a minute. We're going to do a weld. We're going to bump it up to 100 degrees, do another weld. And we're going to go from 700 to 1148. We're not going to touch the speed. Perfect. Are you trying to just bump Oh, those? You'll, you'll drive you crazy. Drive yourself crazy. We're doing both weights today? Both weights. Again, we're doing a BAK. People out there may have other models. They're going to weld different. We're going to cut maybe a two-foot piece. Mm -hmm. When we're done with all these, we're going to cut one-inch strips across the seam. We're not going to pull with the seam. No, you can't do that. That's going to, that could give you a false positive. Right. And that's an actual ASTM standard test, correct? One yep. inch across, and we're going to manually pull them apart and see what our delamination is. Okay. Okay, now I'm just going to bump it up to 800, not touching my speed. Now your wheel is over, right? Yeah, what ideally that's you want to be over a quarter inch or so. You don't you don't want it like this. Mm -hmm. You darn sure don't want it like that. You're gonna have that little bit that probes open. Remember that nozzle's got to slide in that seam. A lot of guys they reach in here and do this number. Oh, I think it'd be a thousand degrees. That's a good way to burn your arm. Yes. Easiest, safest way I know how to do this: tilt it just a little bit. That way it gets pressure off that seam. I can slide that nozzle right in there. Now this is our standard PVC. We're also going to do this with our key. Now, when we're welding PVC, something you got to remember is this nozzle. I'm going to get it off the seam because I'm going to clean it. I don't want that debris going in my, in my sample. The more I weld with this, the more I'm going to have to do this. If I, if I were doing a full 100 foot seam, at the end of that seam, I'd have to clean that nozzle off every time. I've got it set at 900. Again, see how that nozzle is exposed? That's about what you want. Again, you don't want that nozzle buried. Bump it up to a thousand. When you're doing your test welds, don't lap them like that, okay? Because you'll have nothing to pull. You just lap them about an inch or so. And don't use scrap. You've been kicking around the job site for a week or two or you pulled out of the dumpster. You want to use stuff you're using that day. So if I'm on a job site, I've got a roll lane right here. I'm going to cut a chunk off that. And that's what I'm going to be doing my test welds with. Okay, I'm at temperature. You also need to double check, make sure you get this cleaned out. Getting some nice smoke on that Ooh, one, look at that. Yeah, we're starting to get some. And here's Max. So this is the Max this machine will go. She's doing some smoking now. There we go. I think we're probably overheated. Yeah. With the brown and the yellow. Give me that probe. Probe. They're definitely overheated. If this were TPO, that would you'd be able to pull oh, that right apart. Well, PVC likes heat, TPO doesn't. 
Thank you. So Dave, we uh, we got all our samples welded. We beat the ring. Yay. So we didn't have to pull these outside, so we came inside. We got all our key samples welded and all our standard samples mm -hmm. welded, so now we're going to pull them. Now, we've already got them pre-cut, and I always like, and, you know, we'll call the contractors, the guys in my training, cut three samples because, you know, you could get a variation. It could be, you know, just to make sure everything's consistent. Sometimes over a seam, get, over a plate. Yeah, it could be a funky pull, so I always like to cut three three cuts out of each sample mm -hmm. we do. Another thing to, to look at, to mention is, have you ever ran the guys when they're, when they're checking their seams, they always pull long ways? Why should you not pull your seam that way? Because it's an ASTM standard to pull perpendicular to the seam. In a sense, an ASTM standard. So mm -hmm. the manufacturer, doesn't matter who it is. He um, has to go by that standard. They go out and they cut stuff being run that day and they cut it and they weld it with a robot and they pull, it's called an inch round machine, right? And Correct. It's a one inch wide across the seam. It does a mechanical pull. Or perpendicular. Or perpendicular, exactly. Another thing is, if you cut them wider, like sometimes you tend to do and hand them to me, <laughs> Anything this wide over an inch, good luck trying to pull that. One inch is all you need across the seam, and then you're going to actually grab it, and you're going to pull it. Now, you don't want to pull it like this, right? No, not with me standing there. Yeah, because you, especially you stand next to your buddy, because you might get one of these in the chops. So when you guys pull these, you're going to think of it like a machine. Pull it nice and steady, nice and slow. Don't do that quick jerk, because you could get a false reading. Oh, absolutely. You think you have mm -hmm. a per perfect weld. So what we're going to do, the reason why we did all this, we talked about when we did the robot, Mm -hmm. We need to find the bottom of the weld window, and we're going to find the top of the weld window. So we'll get all these pulled, we'll get them all laid out, and we'll go back and we'll go over what we're looking for. Okay. So you want to pull this, you want me to? What is that, the 700? 700. I got it, babe. You got it. <laughs> oh, look at you. Uh-oh. So how wide does our weld have to be, David? Inch to an inch and a half. So obviously, we haven't found the bottom of our weld no. window. So no. 700 is not a good one. But at least we got We're, some turning ball. We got a little bit, okay. Mm -hmm. You want to pull 800? Sure you got it in you? I doubt it, but we'll give it a shot. You going to need something to sit down right after you pull this? Cool. Oh, look at, oh, look at there. So we're, we're right in an inch. We are. I would say we found the bottom of our weld. Mm -hmm. So at now we got to find 800 degrees with our standard material. Right. So now we have to find the top. Correct. So we're going to go back. We're going to pull all these. Mm -hmm. When you come back, we're going to show you. We have all laid out what to look for. So, Dave, oh. we, we got all our samples pulled. How are you feeling? Oh. You're still red, red face from that. Yeah, I know. Kind of interesting what we came up with. And this is what guys need to do on the roof, right? Mm -hmm. As you saw earlier, it was PVC is a lot, seems to me, it's a lot tougher to do that destructive pull than TPO. Sometimes you might have to have stand on it. Yes. And... I've actually had to use a vise before. Mm -hmm. If guys have a vise on the roof, you know, I don't yeah, know, probably maybe not. not. But maybe you got one in your truck, but it, they are better to pull. Mm -hmm. So this is our standard membrane. So it's 700. I think we showed this when we pulled it. We didn't, this is no. not really a good weld, right? No. So 800, we're like right there. So 800, I think, is the bottom of our weld window. We're like right in an inch. Right. So 900, about an inch and a quarter. Ish. Thousand. You're tap dancing on an inch and a half there. Yeah, inch and a half. Now, we're getting up in a little higher temperatures here. So this is at 1100. We so are right at, right at inch, inch and a half. half. Now we're, we're at max temperature. Right. So again, right at inch and a half again. But you can see the discoloration here. Right. The yellowish, brownish color. That's kind of indication that we're getting too hot. Right. And obviously we can't go any hotter, no. right? Could we speed up? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Yes. But now you're at max temperature. What else you got left to play with? You've got speed. Right. And we talked about it with the robot. The faster you go, just like anything, you're going to make mistakes. Right. So you got to keep that thing straight. And, it, you know, it's, it's a bear to run that thing fast. Could you go faster? Sure. Mm -hmm. Again, you're bottomed out your temperature. So let me ask you, where is the bottom? Where is the top? Where would you set your robot up at? So you may be 850, and I would not go past 1100. So run somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. Now, again, the equipment we use... Mm -hmm. It's totally different with somebody else. That, that's our generator, our cord, our equipment. Right. Your test may come out a little bit different depending on the machine you're using. And depending on the temperature, obviously. Yeah, it's what, 56 out, 57, yeah. something like that? Yeah. That This is the main reason why we do this, correct? We test correct. Well. All right, that was our standard. So here's our key membrane. So somehow we kind of had the same thing, right? Yeah, pretty much. 800, I and mean, we had a little mm -hmm. variance in our pulls here, right? We had one good one, one iffy, and one not so good. So 800, maybe, maybe not, 900. Looks good. Looks good. Thousand, beautiful. 
1100 beautiful and max we're like we got a little bit Under. yellowish but i still think that's a good well oh i do too but we're right on that edge oh yes yeah but obviously we can't go any hot, hotter right right so again mr scott mm -hmm. where's their bottom where's their top i'm going to go with nine and all the way up yeah so we got a little, a little wider little well wider window, window with the key, with mm -hmm. the key, which you you should expect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. With the uh, combination of, of wet and dry formulation. So again, we 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 stress this all our trainings. This should be a no brainer. This should be done every day, depending on the part of the country and depending on what time of year it is. You might have to do this two or three times a day. Now, would I would we have to go through all this if you're on a job? No. What I would do is the first day on the job, I would make sure everything's working. I get my generator out, get my cord out, hook everything up, grab some membrane, and make sure that my equipment is working. Yeah, don't wait till you get a couple hundred squares laid up to exactly. find out well, something's not working. Make sure it's working. Next day, I would come up and I would do my window because you may be doing manufacture A, B, C, and now you're on D. They're all going to weld a little bit different. Right. All right. So then I would do my weld window, find out where I'm at, and then the next day, you're going to start right where you should be at. I start right where I'm at, go one one below, one above, and see what I've got. Yeah, give yourself a warm, fuzzy feeling. Yeah. yeah, yeah. it doesn't take that long. No, it doesn't. No, once you get it calibrated, you should be yep. good to go. Yep. So stay tuned so for some more episodes from Roughing It Right with Dave and Wally in the PVC series.